three infrastructure project um, where you have revenue generating um, facilities, it's probably more likely that you'll have a successful project. Um, we have, for example, on I-95 travel plazas and the revenue is the retail sales that support the lease payments made by the vendors at those plazas. Uh, we've also had successful public-private partnerships at the Port of Baltimore uh, and the, the user fees that support the port operators and their lease payments to the state. So that's been a successful one. Uh, and while Secretary LaHood mentioned the silver line to Dulles, we've got the purple line in Maryland, uh, which uh, we think, I mean, the jury's still out, but uh, that, that should be a successful public-private partnership. Uh, and there, that's an example, and I know, Mayor, you, you, you suggested that water infrastructure may not be a candidate for public-private partnership, but I would suggest that it probably is, because as long as there are rates and there are some infrastructure facilities where user fees and rates uh, don't cover uh, the cost of operating that, that's true for transit, for example, fare, back, fare box ratios rarely cover the cost, uh, then there's some public subsidy uh, and uh, an availability payment can be made, and that's what we're doing on the purple line. Uh, but m my question is, and, and it may be a follow-up to uh, one of the questions that was already asked, is there more that the federal government can do and should do to really encourage uh, public-private partnerships where they are, uh, where they make sense? Uh, most states, not all, have set up a public-private partnership uh, statutory regime where the private sector has confidence to make the investments, the public has confidence that there's transparency and accountability, but not every state has. Is there more that the federal government can do to encourage states? And, and, and the final part of that question is, and I'll just, uh, Mayor, uh, I, I noticed there's something called the West Coast um, uh, Infrastructure Exchange, a consortium, California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, um, and um, or like encouraging things like those regional exchanges. Um, that, so what do you think we could do better or more of? Absolutely. Uh, starting at the end, uh, that's been a very successful forum to bring best practices together and to come up with uh, the governance models for this stuff. And it's helped to really accelerate Western United States is becoming kind of the P3 capital of, of America, that we want to see that happen in other places too. Um, you know, it's funny that we talk about P3s like it's something new. The New York subway system was not even P3, it was P1 because they were private when they started and they became public later because against the maintenance piece became too expensive for the private sector so the public bought them. Um, and I think there's a lesson there to be learned of how we can share that over the long term. In transit, it's the ripest place to do this, uh, especially where the federal government, uh, your question was can you do more? Uh, yes, you can write into, I think, this bill allowing it in a protective way that would still keep these public uh, assets, ways that there's some sort of reward for at least having that as an option. I don't think you want to reward P3s over non-P3s because that's going to be a decision locally, but um, places that don't even entertain that are missing at least the options on the table. We have two lines right now that we've had, um, you know, about 10 different companies come forward to bid on. Some of them want to design it, some of them want to maintain it, some of them want to fund it, some of them want to operate, and as much of those as they can have, the, the cheaper they can make it, they say. On the flip side, some people worry, well, if you're operating and maintaining it, is that loss of union jobs? Does that mean you know, we don't get to build it? So there's real tough political things to, to wrestle with, but I think at least a mandating that folks that are applying for new starts and transit should have a P3 office is a great way to start that and to uh, push that forward and give that. Second, TIFIA loans and the loan place, as, as interest rates go up, we will look back at how we're going to finance this. And if we can be cheaper than the private sector, that's another place I think the federal government, without losing money but you know, loaning it, can be helpful in accelerating P3s. Well, the mayor's example, and I think giving us the capacity in the National Governors Association for trying to find creative ways, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes regions, of making sure anything you do and in, in statutorily allows us to be able to use some of these funds across state lines working together uh, beyond the typical ones that are inner city passenger rail things we're trying to enhance. But there's a lot of border areas that we share on infrastructure that I think uh, states, again, going back to the question Mr. Carbajal had, I think it's a really, really important one. The federal highway system, interstate system, state highways, the bulk of my folks and the roads 
are out there clear down to the township levels and and their ability to be able to participate is is hard and that's where i don't know at that point and i think your question is really good uh how do we use public private partnerships in some of these things that aren't these big marquee projects but they're more things that we need to get done thank you, thank you. uh with that uh, we turn to representative pence 